In this unit, we've been reviewing the skills that you need in order to be successful at AP Calculus. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a few things on your TI-84. Before we begin, please make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. It should say radian up here in the upper right hand corner. If it doesn't, hit the mode button, arrow your way down to where it says radian versus degree, highlight radian and hit enter. Then hit second mode to quit your way out. So let's get started. For problem A, we are to find the zeros of the function x to the fifth power plus 7x squared minus 4. So hit your y equals button and uh, let's go ahead and type that function in. So x to the fifth power plus 7x squared minus 4. Go ahead and hit zoom 6 to take a look at the graph. So that's always a good place to start. Um, you can zoom in a bit if you want. If you hit zoom 2, that will sort of zoom you in. You got to hit enter. So we are looking for these. Uh, the zeros are the x-intercepts. Go ahead and hit second trace to access the calculate menu. Option two is the zeros. So you can either arrow your way down to two or you can just type the number two. So it's asking left bound. So really um, you're going to hit the arrow key and get over there close to the first zero, the first x-intercept. Um, now we're to the right of it. Now we're to the left of it. Well it says left bound be to the left of the zero and hit enter. Where it says right bound, hit the right arrow key and move to the right of it. And I realize it's it looks like you're going up and down and both things are happening at the same time, but we are using the left and right arrow key. So we were to the left, now we are to the right and hit enter. Where it says guess, you can just hit enter again. So this is the zero, negative 1.792. In AP Calculus, your decimals will have to be accurate to three decimal places. So they would actually, uh, they will either accept negative 1.791. Let me write this down. Negative 1.791 or they would accept if you rounded properly and put negative 1.792. Either of those would be just as good. I'm going to go ahead and keep the rounded version. So let's go after the second zero. So I'm going to hit second trace and I'm going to choose zero again. This time I'll arrow down to it. Left bound. We need to get over near the middle zero, that middle x-intercept. Okay, so here we are coming in. I'm hitting the right arrow key. Notice right now I just passed it. And you can tell because the y value became negative. Um, so I'm going to hit my left arrow key. So I'm back to the left of it. You can tell because the y value is positive again. So where it says left bound, now I'm going to hit enter. Now it says right bound. So I'm going to hit the right arrow key to move past it and hit enter again. When it says guess, you can just go ahead and hit enter a third time. So the zero this time is negative 0 0.783. Negative 0 0.783. You must be accurate to three decimal places. Let's go after the third zero. Second trace, option two. Use your right arrow key to move over close to that third x-intercept. 
All right, so here we go. All right, so just now I moved to the right of it. See how I moved above the line? So I'm going to use my left arrow key. Um, you don't have to be exactly one click to the left of it. You could be a little bit further away than that. So left bound, enter. Now I'm going to use my right arrow until I move past it. And I'm going to hit enter. When it says guess, I'm just going to hit enter again. So this zero is 0 0.735. 0 0.735. So those are the zeros of problem A. OK, find the zeros of g of x equals x minus cosine x. OK, let's go ahead and type that into our calculator. So hit y equals, clear this out. So we need x minus cosine x. Let's uh, take a look at the graph. OK, so I'm going to hit zoom 6 to zoom back out a little bit. So it looks like there's only going to be one zero. So I'm going to zoom back in with a zoom two. OK, so second trace zeros. We are staring at this x-intercept. I'm moving close to it, but I'm going to make sure I'm to the left of it while it says left bound. I hit enter. Right arrow key, move to the right of that x-intercept, hit enter. Um, for the guess, if you can move even closer to it, that's even better. Hit enter. So this zero is 0 0.739. Zero point seven three nine. Okay, let's find the solutions of x equals cosine x. So if you want to solve an equation, you're going to look at it as two separate equations. We're going to look at the left side as one equation, y equals x to the third power. And we will look at the right side of the equation as its own equation, y equals cosine x. Then the solutions of the equation will be the intersection point between the two. So let's type both of these equations into the calculator. Hit y equals. We'll clear out what's there. So the first equation is x to the third power. So we write x, use the little caret. So we have x to the third power. Arrow down to y2. And now we will type in cosine x. So let's hit zoom 6 to get an initial look at what we're dealing with. So it looks like there will be only one intersection point. I think I will zoom in just to get a closer look. So I'm going to hit zoom 2. Enter. OK, so this intersection point, the x value of that intersection point will be the solution to this equation. So um, we're going to use a new function. We will still hit second trace, but instead of choosing 0, we will choose intersect. All right, you can either scroll down or I could have just hit the number five. First curve. Um, really, I like to just go close to where the intersection point is, and I'm just going to hit enter three times in a row. So it says first curve, I hit enter. Second curve, I'm just going to hit enter. Guess, I'm just going to hit enter a third time. So this is the intersection point. It's the x value that is the solution to this equation. So the solution is x equals 0 
through a point eight six five. So that would be the answer. Don't forget, you must be accurate to three decimal places. If I put 0 0.864, I'm, that's the wrong answer, and I'm going to lose the point on the AP exam. So now let's find the solution to uh, the equation in problem D. e to the negative x power equals sine x. But this time, they've given us a specific interval. So we're only going to uh, look for solutions that are between 0 and 5. We will ignore any other solutions. So back to the calculator. Hit your y equals. Clear out anything that's here. So the first equation. OK, so we will treat this as its own equation. y equals e to the negative x power. And we will treat this as its own equation, y equals sine x. And we will see where they intersect, and the x value will be the solution. So e to the negative x power. See that blue e? So I will hit second natural log. So I've got e to a power. Now I need negative x. Um, don't use this big gray minus button. Use this little white one for a negative sign. So here's e to the negative x power. Now drop down to y2, and now we will do sine x. So here is sine x. Let's do zoom 6. I always start out with zoom 6 to see what I have. So you can see there are multiple intersection points. But we only care about the ones between 0 and 5. Now is a good time for me to show you how to uh, adjust your window manually. I've been hitting zoom 2 to just sort of zoom in, but it keeps the origin right in the center. Um, this time, we know we only care about values that are between 0 and 5. So let's hit the window button. Let's go ahead and adjust the x values. The minimum x value we care about is 0. So let's just type a 0 here. The maximum x value um, is 5. So let's just limit the x values to between 0 and 5. Um, the window with the y values between negative 10 and positive 10, this is probably OK. It seemed like we could zoom in even closer. You know what? The more I think about it, we know that sine x stays between positive 1 and negative 1. It rises and falls between positive 1 and negative 1. So we don't need to go all the way up to positive 10 and all the way down to negative 10. I'll give it a little bit of breathing room and uh, let's, let's, do, um, let's do negative 2 and positive 2. And that should be plenty. So let's hit graph and see what we've got. OK, so by zooming in that carefully, we can see that um, we have one intersection point between 0 and 5. So now we can just find that. Go ahead and do second trace, intersect. I'm just going to type the number 5 this time. Use your arrow key to move the cursor close to the intersection point. Just hit Enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. And that's it. So the solution is just the x value um, of the intersection. So 3.096. Wait a minute, I went blind. For a second, there are clearly two intersection points here in the interval between 0 and 5. There's the one that we just found, but there's another one over here between 0 and 1. So we still need to find that. Go ahead and hit second trace, intersect, option 5, and slide on over close to that other intersection point. Go ahead and hit enter three times. 
And there it is. Another solution is x equals 0 0.589. OK, so this equation had two solutions on the interval from 0 to 5. One more, use your calculator to solve this system of equations graphically. In order to be able to put these equations in the calculator, we really need to get y by itself for both of these equations. Uh, I think I'm going to zoom in. So the top equation is the tricky one. We need to get y by itself so we can put it in the calculator. So uh, I think I'm going to start just by recopying this. So we've got x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. To get y by itself, we will subtract x squared from both sides. So now I have y squared is equal to 25 minus x squared. To get y completely alone, we need to take the square root of both sides of the equation. But don't forget, when you take the square root of both sides, the solution will be plus or minus. That's very important. So I'm actually going to drop down and split this apart into two separate equations. So I'm going to say y1 is equal to positive square root 25 minus x squared. y2 will be the negative square root of 25 minus x squared. So we've gotten y by itself, even though we had to split it apart into two halves. Uh, the other equation is much easier. Looking at the uh, x plus y equals 6, all we have to do is subtract x from both sides. So we get y equals 6 minus x. So we have the purple equation, and we have um, the two halves of the red equation. So essentially, we have to type all three of these equations into the calculator. Let's start with y1, so the square root of 25 minus x squared. Clear out what's there. So we will do the square root of 25 minus x squared. And then y2 will be the same thing, but with a negative in front. So negative square root 25 minus x squared. And then uh, for the third equation, we'll do this little purple guy, 6 minus x. We need to see the intersection between these. So let's start off with a zoom 6. You can see how the plus or minus square root of 25 minus x squared gave us the blue and the red parts of this graph. It looks like an ellipse. It is really a circle. It's just that the screen is a rectangle, so it's compressing the y values a little bit. We have to be more careful than normal because we do have three equations being graphed on this screen. So I'm going to hit second trace, intersect like I did before. But I want you to pay attention to a couple of things. Um, the colors. Right now it is asking about the first curve. And notice that the numbers are shown in blue. That's telling me that it's on the blue curve. Also at the top of the screen, it's showing the actual equation, y1, the uh, positive square root 25 minus x squared. This intersection is between the blue and the black. 
right? The positive 25, uh, the positive square root 25 minus x squared and the linear graph. So normally I would just come over here and I would hit enter, enter, enter really fast. But if I hit enter, it switches, uh, it switches from blue to red. And you can see now it's way down here and it's showing the negative square root 25 minus x squared. This is not the curve I want for an intersection. I wanted the blue and the black. So I need to hit the arrow key to switch it to the black. It doesn't matter if you use the up arrow or the down arrow. Just make sure you switch it to black. So now I hit enter. And I can just hit enter a third time. So this is the intersection point. Remember, you must be accurate to three decimal places. So I'm going to have 1.129, comma. This time we're solving the system of equations. So we're going to want the x value and the y value. So the y value is 4.871, 4.871. So that is the first solution. Now let's find the second one. So we're going to hit second trace again and choose five for intersection. Go ahead and move over close to the intersection point. All right, we still want the blue and the black. So the blue is showing right now, so that's fine. I hit enter. It switches to red. Nope, I don't want the red, so I hit the uh, down arrow key. Now I've got the black, which is the other one I wanted, so I hit enter. For guess, I can just ignore that and hit enter again. So this is the second intersection point, uh, 4.871. comma, 1.129. Interesting. Symmetry. Uh, but that's it. This is the final answer.